Hey there, I'm Ariana, and boy do I have a story for you. Before I dive in, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to catch all the drama that's about to unfold. Trust me, you won't want to miss it. I'm 28, killing it in my marketing career. And I've just tied the knot with Mark, this tech whiz who's as charming as they come. We would just snagged our dream house in this cute little suburb. Life was looking pretty sweet, you know? I'm unpacking boxes in our new living room when Mark walks in, grinning ear to ear. Babe, I've got an idea. Let's throw a housewarming party this weekend. I can't help but smile back. That sounds amazing. We could invite our parents to stay over, make it a real family affair. Mark's face lights up. Perfect. I'll call my folks right now. As he dials, I feel a knot forming in my stomach. Don't get me wrong, I love Mark's mom. But his dad, Robert? That's a whole different story. Later that night, I'm cooking dinner when Mark brings it up. So, my parents are all set for the weekend. Dad's really looking forward to it. I try to keep my voice casual. That's great. Um, did you mention to your dad about not smoking in the house? Mark sighs. Ari, come on. It's just for a couple of days. He won't smoke inside, I promise. But I've heard this before. Robert, with his gruff exterior and chain-smoking habit, has never been one to follow rules he doesn't like. The day of the party arrives, and I'm a bundle of nerves. My parents show up first, all smiles and hugs. Then Mark's parents pull up. His mom, Linda, rushes over to hug me, while Robert hangs back, eyeing our new home. Nice place you got here, he grumbles. Must have cost a pretty penny. Good thing you've got that fancy job of yours, eh? I force a smile. We're really happy with it, Robert. Can I get you a drink? As the party kicks off, I find myself constantly checking on Robert, making sure he's not lighting up inside. I catch him eyeing the back porch a few times, and I silently pray he'll stick to smoking out there. Hours pass, and things are going smoothly. I'm chatting with my best friend Samantha when I notice Robert's not around. Have you seen Robert? I ask Mark. He shrugs. Probably taking a nap. You know how he gets at parties. I nod trying to shake off the uneasy feeling. But as I head to the kitchen to grab more snacks, I catch a whiff of something that stops me in my tracks. Is that... smoke? My heart racing, I rush towards the living room, and there, sprawled on our brand new couch, is Robert. Fast asleep, with a lit cigarette dangling from his fingers. I stood there, frozen in disbelief, staring at Robert passed out on our new couch with that lit cigarette. My heart was pounding so hard, I thought it might burst out of my chest. I wanted to scream, to shake him awake, but I was paralyzed. Then, in a split second, everything changed. A small ember fell from the cigarette onto the couch cushion, and before I could even blink, flames erupted. The fire spread so fast, it was like watching a movie and fast forward. Fire! Everyone out! I screamed at the top of my lungs. Panic set in as I rushed to Robert's side. Wake up! We need to get out! He was dead weight, and the smoke was getting thicker by the second. I could hear people shouting and running, but it all seemed so far away. With strength I didn't know I had, I managed to drag Robert off the couch and towards the door. Mark! Help me! I yelled, coughing as the smoke filled my lungs. Mark appeared through the haze, his eyes wide with shock. Together we dragged Robert out onto the front lawn. People were gathered around, some on their phones calling for help, others just staring in horror. The sound of sirens filled the air as fire trucks screeched to a halt in front of our house. Firefighters rushed past us, hoses at the ready. I collapsed onto the grass, gasping for air, watching as they battled the blaze that was consuming our dream home. Robert had been taken to the hospital for smoke inhalation, with Linda riding along in the ambulance. Mark had just returned from checking on them, and he looked pale and shaken. How's your dad? I asked, my voice hoarse from the smoke. Mark shook his head. He's going to be okay. But Ari, he's saying some things. I felt a chill run down my spine. What things? Before Mark could answer, a police officer approached us. Ma'am, we need to ask you a few questions about how the fire started. 
I opened my mouth to explain, but Mark cut me off. Officer, my wife's been through a lot. Can't this wait? The officer looked skeptical. We need to determine the cause of the fire as soon as possible. Your father mentioned something about candles. My jaw dropped. Candles? There weren't any candles. It was... Mark squeezed my arm, cutting me off. Ari, you're upset. Maybe you don't remember everything clearly. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Was Mark really siding with his father? I pulled away from him, anger bubbling up inside me. I remember everything perfectly, I said, my voice shaking. Your father was smoking on the couch. I saw him light the cigarette myself. The officer jotted something in his notebook. We'll need to investigate further. In the meantime, do you have somewhere you can stay? I nodded numbly, watching as Mark's face hardened. He turned to me, his voice low. Why are you trying to blame my dad? He could have died in there. I'm not blaming anyone, I hissed back. I'm telling the truth. Why don't you believe me? Looking at the ruins of our home, at Mark's disbelieving face, I felt a sudden overwhelming sense of loss. Not just of our possessions, but of the trust and understanding I thought we had. As the reality of the situation sank in, I realized that the fire had destroyed more than just our living room. It had burned away the illusion of my perfect life. The days after the fire felt like a nightmare I couldn't wake up from. I was staying at Samantha's place, trying to piece my life back together while Mark spent all his time at the hospital with Robert. The insurance company was giving me the runaround, asking for statements and evidence I didn't have. One evening, I broke down in Samantha's kitchen. I don't know what to do, Sam. No one believes me about the cigarette. Samantha handed me a cup of tea. You need to stand up for yourself, Ari. Tell the truth, loud and clear. I shook my head. You don't understand. If I do that, I could lose Mark and his whole family. And if you don't, you could lose everything else, she countered. At work, things weren't any better. I was struggling to focus, and my boss, Janet, called me into her office. Ariana, I know you're going through a tough time, but this project is crucial. Are you sure you can handle it? I nodded, forcing a smile. Absolutely, Janet, I won't let you down. That night, I finally got a chance to talk to Mark when he came to pick up some clothes. Mark, we need to talk about what happened. Your dad. He cut me off. Ari, not now. Dad's still recovering, and we need to focus on that. But what about us? What about our home? I pleaded. Mark just shook his head and left, leaving me feeling more alone than ever. The next day, I decided to surprise Mark at the hospital, hoping to reconnect. As I approached Robert's room, I heard hushed voices. Dad, don't worry. We'll make sure Ari takes the fall for this. The insurance will have to pay out then. I couldn't believe my ears. My own husband, plotting against me with his father. Back at Samantha's, I paced the living room, my mind racing. Sam, you won't believe what I just heard. I spilled everything. The conversation at the hospital, the rumors at work, the insurance troubles. Samantha's face hardened. That's it, Ari. You need to fight back. This isn't just about the fire anymore. They're trying to ruin your life. I nodded, a strange calm settling over me. You're right. I can't let them do this to me. I pulled out my phone, scrolling through my contacts until I found the name I was looking for. Liz, my old college roommate who'd become a private investigator. Liz, it's Ariana. I need your help. As I explained the situation to Liz, I felt a spark of hope for the first time since the fire. I might have lost my home and my marriage, but I wasn't going to lose myself. It was time to take control and fight for the truth. Okay, Ari, Liz said. Here's what we're going to do. As I listened to her plan, I knew this was just the beginning. The fallout from the fire had changed everything, but I was determined to rise from the ashes, stronger than ever. Liz and I huddled over her laptop, watching the live feed from the hidden cameras we'd set up in my partially repaired living room. My heart was racing as I saw Robert and Mark enter. You sure this will work? I whispered. Liz nodded. Trust me, Ari. 
We'll get what we need. On screen, Robert settled onto the couch, pulling out a cigarette. I held my breath as he lit up, smoke curling around him. Dad, you shouldn't smoke in here, Mark said half-heartedly. Robert waved him off. Relax, son. This is how we'll seal the deal. When the insurance people come, they'll smell the smoke and assume it's from the fire. Mark nodded. And with Ariana out of the picture, we can claim it was her fault all along. I felt sick listening to them, but Liz squeezed my hand. We've got them, Mary. The next day, I invited Mark and Robert over, my stomach in knots. When they arrived, I hit play on the video. Their faces paled as they watched themselves plotting against me. Robert tried to snatch the laptop, but I pulled it away. How could you do this to me? I demanded, my voice shaking. Mark stuttered. Ari, it's not what it looks like. It's exactly what it looks like, I cut him off. You were going to let me take the fall for something your father did. Robert's face turned red. Now listen here, young lady. No, you listen, I interrupted. I have two choices. I can take this to the police and the insurance company, or you can come clean and clear my name. The silence was deafening. Finally, Mark spoke. We'll tell the truth, Ari. I'm so sorry. In the weeks that followed, everything changed. The insurance claim was settled in my favor. I used the money to buy out Mark's share of the house in our divorce settlement. At work, I threw myself into my projects. Janet called me into her office one day. Ariana, I'm impressed with your recent work. The promotion is yours if you want it. I couldn't help but smile. I do, Janet. Thank you. As I redecorated the house, erasing all traces of the fire and my life with Mark, I felt lighter. My parents and Samantha were there every step of the way, helping me heal. The story has come to an end. Now I have a question for you. If you were in my shoes, would you have confronted Mark and Robert immediately upon discovering their betrayal? Or would you have gathered evidence like I did? What do you think is the right balance between trusting your loved ones and protecting yourself? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your experiences and opinions matter, and they might help someone else facing a similar situation. If you enjoyed this story and want to hear more like it, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Your support means the world to me and helps me continue sharing these stories of resilience and personal growth. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next video.